Hi, my name is Leslie Borgia and I'm the tax manager at Neil Jasani Advisors. Here at Neil Jasani Advisors, we are a team of CPAs, tax attorneys, and financial planners working together to create the most tax efficient, modern holistic strategies for our clients' unique situations. The purpose of these short videos are to answer some of our clients' most frequently asked questions regarding their personal and business tax returns. So let's dive right into today's topic, hiring your kids. So what are the rules for hiring your children? How much can they earn tax-free? And what are the benefits to you and them? So the Internal Revenue Code Publication 929 spells out the current tax rules for children and dependents by explaining the filing requirements and other information such as the deductions and exemptions that may apply. Furthermore, it explains how to report and figure tax on investment income of children, regardless of whether or not they are being claimed on your return as a dependent. Most of this presentation will be related to when your child is actually earning income, but there are some scenarios when they will be required to file a return even if they haven't earned the sufficient wages. So some of those scenarios might be when they owe other taxes such as Social Security or Medicare, they have self-employment wages exceeding $400, they owe other types of taxes like AMT, health savings, recapture, or they make contributions to a qualified retirement plan such as an IRA. These scenarios will require a return to be filed even if they're not exceeding that standard deduction amount. So hiring family members 101. So you've decided to bring a child onto your payroll. That's a great idea. And if you're a sole proprietor, single member LLC, or a spousal partnership, you're permitted to pay each of your child seven, ages seven through 18, up to $12,950 income and payroll tax free, which including the FICA tax, this $12,950 is the current standard deduction amount for tax year 2022 for single individual dependents. The pay that you pay your child must be reasonable based upon the current market trend and the business industry. So you can't pay your kid 50 bucks per hour to cut yards when the market rate in your area is $10 per hour. Uh, the services must also be legitimate and for business purposes, and the child must be suitable for the task. The, you need to keep the federal employment laws, child laws in mind when you are hiring them on. If you run a construction site, you really can't have your small child working there. Uh, it's a dangerous job and the IRS would really not like that. So assuming that you qualify, uh, the business will take an expense deduction for the payroll payment. They will in turn have a decreased taxable income, which will lower their income tax and self-employment tax liabilities. The child will then file their own return and report $12,950 or less taxable income. But because of the standard deduction amount, they will owe $0 in federal tax. If you're not one of those sole proprietorships, but rather organized as a S Corp, C Corp, or a non-spousal partnership, the corporation can still deduct the child wages but they must withhold the payroll taxes if they are formed as one of these entities. The child can still claim the $12,950 standard deduction for their earned income. So what is earned income? Earned income is active income. It's the salaries, wages, tips that are earned from working at a job. So if you have a dependent whose gross income is only earned income, you just need to file the return if it exceeds that standard amount of $12,950. But if they have unearned income, there's some different rules because that re that relates to passive income, investments, interest, dividends, capital gains. So when their income is only an unearned income variety, they need to file the return if it exceeds $1,150. This is a pretty important threshold because the IRS really looks unfavorably upon what it looks like to be high earning parents shifting some unearned income to a lower income child in order to lower the tax liability. Uh, if the IRS suspects this, something called the kitty tax may kick in, which is going to really change the way the taxes are figured on this unearned income. All right, so kitty tax, I just want to kind of rehash that. It prevents the shifting of income. Uh, so once the child's unearned income meets this $2,300, which is the amount for 2022, uh, it will no longer be taxed at that dependent rate, but rather anything above that is going to be at the parent's marginal tax rate. 
So when I was talking about S corps and C corps, uh, we kind of touched about how payroll taxes still needed to be withheld. But a lot of our clients are wondering, is there a way to avoid these taxes? Well, yes, there is. There is an IRS compliant workaround to this tax problem. And the solution is to create a family management company, FMC. So the family management company would be created as a sole proprietorship, a single member LLC, or the spousal partnership. And this family management company would support the daily operations of this corporation. And instead of the corporation hiring the child and having them on their payroll, the FMC would be the one that hires the child and puts them on their payroll. So the FMC, you know, supporting these daily operations would charge the corporation a management fee for these, this support that they provide. And from that fee, they're going to pay the child. So now this child is no longer on the corporate payroll. It's on this family management company payroll, which we already established earlier that these payroll and income taxes do not have to be withheld. So the same deduction would apply. Only income above $12,950 would require the filing of a return. Uh, so again, I, I mentioned earlier about there are some scenarios where children would have to file a return regardless. And one of them was um, IRA contributions. Roth IRA contributions are huge. They are a great benefit um, to teach children about, you know, saving money, putting away money for their retirement and for expenses they may later in life. Um, generally, it's a great opportunity because there's a realistic return rate of usually above 5%. So a child can contribute the lesser of his or her earned income for the year or $6,000. And, you know, the a Roth IRA is far superior to a traditional IRA in this situation because the Roth will allow a tax-free withdrawal of all contributions made, whereas the traditional would treat this withdrawal of contributions as a taxable event that needed to be reported. So just to recap, when is filing required? I touched on those um, scenarios that may kick in and require the return filing. Self-employed, sole proprietors, single LLCs, don't have to withhold any income or payroll taxes. Corporations do unless we get creative and uh, form a family management company, which will support that corporation. Uh, we know that income, you need to, can't exceed $12,950 before you start having to pay taxes. Um, you know, earned income is, you know, the active income you're making at your job. Unearned is passive that's generated by your investments. Um, too much unearned income reporting, it's going to kick that kitty tax in and you're going to start paying a much higher rate, um, which would be your marginal tax rate as opposed to what your dependent child would be enjoying. So overall, it's a great idea to hire your kids. Um, it teaches them the value of money. It allows them to, you know, put money aside and it allows you to lower your taxable burden by offsetting some of your income by paying your children to work in your business. Thank you for watching this video on hiring your kids and I hope the information was helpful. Nothing in this video, however, constitutes investment, tax, or legal advice. Corporations and individuals are encouraged to seek guidance of their own personal legal investment or tax counsel. If you would like to learn more about Neil Jasani Advisors and how we're helping our clients, please visit our website at neiljasani.com.